Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Supply Chain Ambassador Podcast. I am Bruno, your host, helping you navigate the world of supply chain in a fun and engaging way, giving you top-notch insights and knowledge direct from industry professionals. On today's podcast, I want to help you understand how the government implements green to its buying practices. To help me understand greening in the government, I welcome our guest for today, Mathieu Lesage. Mathieu Lesage works as a senior government contracting advisor for green procurement for the Treasury Board of Canada. Welcome, Mathieu. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, so can you tell me about green procurement in the Canadian government? Yeah, so uh, green procurement in the Canadian context is, uh, as you can expect, very uh, very broad and uh, very complex. So to boil it down very, uh, very succinctly, I would say that green procurement is the uh, idea of procuring things that are good for the environment, so in a very broad term. Um, the key element for this is the policy on green procurement, which uh, more or less mandates that environmental considerations be included when uh, purchasing uh, and procuring uh, goods and services from for the government. Yeah. So this is broadly speaking, more more uh, precisely, it's how do we make sure that the purchasing power of the government is used uh, to uh, fight climate change and environmental uh, other environmental considerations, so uh, that we don't cause more problems, uh, uh, environmental problems uh, with our procurement. So yes, yeah, this is uh, mm. why is green procurement important. So, um, so there's, there, this is a, like a two uh, two part answer. I think uh, again, broadly speaking, we're talking about uh, uh, primarily climate change. So, uh, uh, not to get into the, too deep of into the topic, but obviously, climate change is a uh, the challenge of our time in terms of that the Earth is warming, and this creates a lot of problems, uh, issues around the world, and for for various uh, various elements. Yeah. And there's others, there's other environmental considerations such as waste and just the usage of of, uh, of resources. Yeah. Uh, so it's like one element. So uh, how can we as a purchaser in the government, in the government itself, uh, who has a major purchasing power, uh, be, use that purchasing power to uh, help solve those issues? So. Um, in, there's two, and then this is this, this two sub elements really where mm-hmm. uh, the government is by itself a major purchaser, yeah, uh, about 18 billion uh, dollars uh, annually. So, of wow. course, when if we say we're going to buy, uh, if we say we're going to buy uh, only a specific or, or 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 include environmental criteria, then obviously uh, the market can respond. Yeah. Uh, there's also the international context. So while Canada is um, still somewhat of a big purchaser uh, under jurisdiction, so the, the uh, European Union and uh, recently the U.S. has been back and sort of uh, they're also moving in that direction. So Canada has to, uh, if not lead and at least follow those those, uh, those elements. So there's definitely an international push to do this. I see. And then I think finally it's important it's important to uh, to talk about sort of um, uh, setting the example. So, if uh, the Canadian uh, government uh, is going to encourage uh, industry or even citizens to do to green, to reduce waste, or to do actions against climate change, then the government itself should also uh, be doing this, right? So, we should be buying more environmentally friendly uh, products, try to reduce waste, for example. So, that should be part of it. So that we also lead by example. Yeah, I was. You took the words right out of my mouth. Leading by example is definitely the way to go to instill that le- leadership. Uh, so, what are some of the challenges that you're facing with some of these green procurement uh, initiatives? Yeah, well, similar to when we talk about like why is it important, and I guess the challenges are uh, at the same level. So, first of all, there's a lot of environmental issues that we can tackle. Uh, 
So it's like the problem isn't isn't simple. If it were, then we would have probably have already addressed it. So there's lots of variables, lots of elements we can tackle. Uh, that's broadly uh, one one element. Then when we get um, one of the challenges, also as I alluded to, sort of Canada is is the government of Canada is a big purchaser. Uh, broadly speaking in Canada, but internationally, it's still a minor player. So that's certainly a challenge that so we can't say, well, we're going to buy something that's very strict in terms of environmental and then nobody wants to, to, to business or there's nothing available in the market. So uh, because, well, we're just the only one and we're not that, that important in the grand scheme of international uh, procurement. Uh, also, market readiness uh, is tied to that. So something isn't readily available. Um, and it's kind of hard to push for it. So uh, this is a good example of an electric, electric vehicle. So yes, we would like to buy electric vehicles for a whole of government, but well, there just isn't enough electric vehicle. Like uh, manufacturers aren't producing enough. So it's yeah. definitely sort of a challenge. Yeah. And then I would say from a, this is like broadly from a potential perspective to the challenges, but from its application, I guess we run into sort of a standard implementation into the government. So uh, obviously the government is a huge and complex machine that is hard to uh, to move sometimes. So that's there, there's definitely sort of how do you get the government itself to move in one direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's definitely a challenge. So some departments are small, some departments are big. Uh, so like, how do you apply this across the board? That makes sense. Wow. And then um, I'd also say that one other challenge from a purely procurement element is that um, like green, green, green procurement is one element uh, that is pushed onto procurement, but there's a lot of other, uh, which I would say social consideration in procurement. So uh, recently procurement and the government has really pushed to do a lot, like to leverage the purchasing power of the government to, to not just to help not just uh, greening elements, but multitude of social economic uh, uh, considerations. So it's like, how do you make this that it makes sense? Like, how does it all work together? So mm -hmm. those are definitely like the key challenges from the, from the community's perspective. Wow, sounds like there's a lot of interconnectedness between that social procurement component, yeah. green procurement component. Yeah. How are you? Uh, how are you addressing these challenges? So one of the key things we did at the uh, Center for uh, Green Government is uh, we we commissioned a, uh, a study uh, that sort of highlighted the key uh, area, the key uh, commodities that the government has. Uh, uh, which is a major producer of greenhouse gases. Yeah. So uh, this allowed us to target high impact categories that uh, what we should focus on. So uh, so this allow, this tells us basically our roadmap to see where where should we put our efforts. So um, like if for for example, one of the high impact categories is cement and uh, concrete, which mm -hmm. obviously in, in buildings. Uh, so this is a major this is a major producer or, uh, of greenhouse gases. So we're going to focus on that, not something that is not as important in terms of. So this is, again, the idea of targeted impact. So where we can get the most impact for our uh, efforts. Mm -hmm. That's one way. So have targeted elements. Uh, another um, element that we have uh, we are launching is a buyer's uh, for climate action. So it's trying to bring together the federal government, but also provincial governments and uh, major cities uh, in Canada to sort of look at how we can harmonize sort of those uh, procurement requirements. So um, again, if I take concrete, if we just want to buy the same concrete, like the environmental friendly concrete that has less greenhouse gases, mm -hmm. uh, like if the government, if the federal government says that's what we're going to buy, but also uh, the province of BC and Quebec, Ontario, and then municipalities, then it does also sort of indicate the market. Like you, you can go that route because there are, there will be market. Uh, that's from a Canadian perspective, and we're also sort of uh, looking at the international aspects of so trying to bring like the EU and aligning with the EU and the US to sort of have again make sure that we're all purchasing, trying to purchase the same use the same criteria so we can leverage uh, everybody's purchasing power. Yeah, because it certainly is going to be a, a united effort. 
Go ahead. From a very specific, uh, from a very like implementation perspective, we um, we're really looking at trying to make it as easy as possible for the procurement community to um, to implement the greening uh, uh, elements that we're current purchase uh, that we'll be asking to uh, to procure or include. So yeah, just to provide. Uh, um, actual language that they can use in their procurement documents as opposed to just um like just um i, I guess one thing i didn't i didn't uh, talk about is also we're looking at higher dollar at least for now higher dollar value so uh, again like we're not too concerned with small like local companies that have like a very small impact so we are looking at major contracts and again major major suppliers because that's where again speaking of impact yeah. so for those higher dollar value we are looking at providing as much like ready-made information and criteria that the procurement people can just easily implement so that it's not, a, it's not complicated or it's, it's readily available so it's like being able to define what aspects of green that you're looking for rather than saying we want something that's green which is left to interpretation yeah yeah and Th this is good for like for example some of standing offers and supply arrangements have um, what we would say green criteria so environmental friendly elements but um that's it's like you have to search for it so you have to act actively procure off of that standing offer with that green element to to see the benefits which which is good like it's a good it's a good way but it's not it's not where we'll get the most impact from high dollar value so yeah um, and again this is all tied to targeted so targeted commodity targeted value so we're looking at the big stuff that have like the most impact wow so how can listeners find out more about these green initiatives or just green procurement in general so uh we have a uh, the center for green government has a gcp a web page that uh we're in the midst of updating providing more uh, again uh guidance reference um and then all our the work that we're doing will will be there um also we're looking at probably uh, establishing a gc collab uh, uh, group where green procurement um, um practitioners or anybody can be can go and either ask questions because um obviously we're, we're a small team so we don't have all the expertise so we rely on people who either have uh, experience or key uh, expert departments or at NRCAN or ECCC um to sort of provide that expertise so hopefully the GC collab can bring people together and maybe share experience uh because uh, while we're working on the um uh higher uh, dollar value higher impact we're definitely um like we're 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 pushing for people like in the, in in on their day-to-day -day procurement to still uh sort of take a champion green procurement and mm -hmm. like look at potentially like if you're doing a fifty thousand dollar procurement well you can look at i don't know a, any any co certification that uh like is makes it more eco-friendly and, and request it in your uh, request for a proposal or request for quote. I mean, we're not going to tell you like, well, this is the one you have to use, but sort of providing the uh, the links to references like that will is some only something where everybody can and then pe these people can share and experience things that work, things that didn't work. Wow, I think that's great. Um, any call to actions for our listeners or anything? that you want to leave off on like a, a point for people to kind of keep in yeah. mind. Yeah. And I think that's uh, probably my point is that everybody, uh, while we're working uh, for the high impact, I think everybody can have a, an impact mm -hmm. on their, uh, I'm going to say everyday procurement. So smaller procurements, uh, like it's looking at environmental certification that are available. How can we green this requirement? Like it, it's again, um, from from various angles, so there's greenhouse gases, but there's also waste, plastic. So yeah. if you're going to buy a plastic utensil, well, maybe look at buying metal ones that will last longer and create less waste and yeah. better for the environment. Uh, sort of everybody has some some power to make those changes, yeah. and uh, so that's what I would 
encourage people to do on a smaller scale. Yeah. And if we go even smaller than that, I think in my personal life, when I make my day-to-day -day purchases, I should, you know, it certainly pays off to be more inclined to buy things that I know are either from recycled materials or have benefits to the environment or can be easily recyclable. So that's just, yeah, yeah getting to the really minute, but um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Mathieu Lesage, for taking the time to really um, sit with me to explore what green procurement is and the impact that it has. And now- no, Again, thank you for having No problem. I have the quote of the day that I'll leave uh, today's podcast with. And this one was by the uh, 39th president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, who said, the love of nature is a common language that can transcend political and social boundaries. And I think that applies to all this greening initiatives where really it's, it's a concerted effort from all of us coming together to do what's right. So with that, I really want to thank you. I want to thank your team for all the hard work they've been doing as we go into uh, the coming days. So thank you. Mm -hmm.